Hi, this is Walt Holm, and I'm here with Brian Grau. We're at Open ROV, and we're here to tell you about some of the custom modifications that we made to an Open ROV 2.8 in order to allow us to explore the sunken steamer SS Tahoe, which is lying in Lake Tahoe at depths between 110 meters and 150 meters. And um, so I'll let Brian start with things. Yeah, so the first thing we had to modify um, was the battery tubes as well as the main housing. Um, so the acrylic end caps that are on the stock 2.8 can't handle the pressures uh, at the depths we were operating. The main tube can, the 3 16th inch uh, acrylic tube, uh, that can handle the depths, but the end caps we had to rethink them just a little bit. So it's the same stack up as a normal 2.8 end cap but it's machined out of a solid piece of Type 2 PVC. And then the only change we made from that stack up uh, was we recessed in the outer uh, white 1.5 millimeter acrylic, and we also switched from a syringe to an O-ring screw uh, for the, seal the venting mechanism and then resealing that. Then the other change we had to make was to the battery tubes on the vehicle. Um, so the battery tubes are actually thicker and we had to increase the thickness of the front end cap as well as the rear uh, plate that's epoxy to the backside in order to handle the pressures. So for those of you who saw the videos that we posted of the SS Tahoe, you noticed that the video is quite a bit higher quality than you would normally get from an Open ROV 2.8. That's because we're actually using the camera that's going to be used on our upcoming Trident ROVs and we have put it into an Open ROV 2.8. So we custom modified a light board with the Trident camera on it and we're using a special corrector lens to correct for the distortion that's caused by the uh, cylinder, uh, the cylindrical housing of the Open ROV 2.8. And we have some custom blinders on here, cylindrical lens mount, and the Trident camera. This Trident camera has higher resolution than the stock 2.8 camera. It shoots at a higher frame rate and it has better low light level sensitivity. So all in all, you get a much better picture out of it. And that is coupled with software we've been developing that allows you to stream the footage from the camera onto the internet in real time. So the other thing was operating at the depths, uh, ambient light doesn't get down that far. So we had to provide our own light source. So we did that with four of our external light cubes. We've got two mounted at the top of the vehicle and then two mounted on the front facing at a 45 degree angle down. So what this allows us to do is uh, actually operate these independently of each other. We did have to make modifications to the actual control board uh, to handle the current that all these lights are consuming. Uh, but we used the two front lights that were downward facing, kind of like searching when we were looking at the wreck and when we were shooting from above. And then the top lights were used when we were kind of like face on to the ship um, to illuminate the sides of it. When you have all four light cubes on at the same time, your lights are drawing something on the order of 25 watts, and so that coupled with the other power draws of the system would lead to a sharply reduced uh, emission lifetime. So what we've done is we've been testing out new batteries. These are the latest generation of lithium NMC batteries. Uh, the current stock lithium iron phosphate batteries used on OpenROV 2.8 have about 10 watt hours per cell. These are 18 watt hours per cell, so 80% more energy in each battery. Um, they are a little bit heavier, so they do cause some buoyancy changes to the ROV, but uh, it's worth the trade off for 80% longer battery life. So that allowed us, when we were diving on the Tahoe, we could have all four lights running, we brightly illuminating the entire scene, and we were still able to get two hour mission time. Uh, out of one charge of the batteries. Another little modification we made is uh, we added a 12 volt power supply onto the board that allowed us to hook up a uh, Tritec Micron Nav USB-L transponder. It was mounted on a tail surface here and this little connector here when we had the Tritec transponder mounted um, you would just plug into it right here. So the USB-L transponder allows you to monitor the position of the ROV while it's underwater, which is something that we've never been able to do before. So with all the changes that we've talked about so far, um, the changes to the batteries, which are a little bit heavier, um, the tube end caps, uh, the Type 2 PVC is denser than acrylic, 
So we had to mess with the weight and balance of the vehicle. Um, so for the buoyancy side, we had to add flotation on the rear of it in order to bring it back to being neutrally buoyant in the water. And then with the actual shell, we had we redesigned it just a little bit. It's the stock shell, uh, but we had to increase the length just a little bit to account for the change in the thickness of the battery tubes. And then we also added some extra mounting points for um, the Micron nav, as well as zip ties for the wire management and everything like that. Uh, but overall, the vehicle uh, performed fantastically. On the three dives we did on the SS Tahoe, they were all completed with this one vehicle here. We never had to use the backup vehicle um, just due to its being extremely reliable and robust, and the system worked beautifully.